I have never felt this guilty barging into someone's house at nine o'clock in the morning, <laughs> especially when that person is not a morning person. Today's episode of Lokesh Gets Personal is going to be really, really interesting and very sleepy as well because uh, we are talking to somebody who is not a morning person to begin with, but she has dabbled in so many things. She has worked at a call center. She has been a beauty pageant. She was a cabin crew, and now she runs her own business and is also an influencer and also a mom of two beautiful girls. We are talking to and about. Avantika Mohan. Oh my God, this is such a nice uh, introduction. I didn't realize I've done so many things. You have. Yeah. You have. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you still sleepy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, the thing is that I do try and stick to the time, and this time it had to be done because huh. last time. We are. Anyway. <laughs> so we've been going back and forth on this, and I, I mean, and thank you so much for making yeah. time. I, yeah. I really appreciate that, Avantika. And I, uh, just to give you a little background on the podcast. Yeah. It's called Lokesh Gets Personal. Yeah. Um, so I want you to like kind of talk about topics that are socially relevant. Okay. Through uh, personalities in the UAE who I find pretty interesting and fascinating. So sweet. And thank I, you. and I genuinely mean for for you as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for saying that. So. Where should we begin from? Should we begin from the from the first meeting that we had? Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? I think if people get to know how we met, they're going to be like, "This woman is crazy." <laughs> okay, so you know, yeah, we're definitely going to talk about your influencing, um, you know, social media, Instagram, your business, your relationship with your husband, your days back in Dehradun and Delhi, your cabin crew days, and all that. Uh, but right in the beginning, I think it's going to give a good context to our listeners as to how we first met. Yeah. So I work for a radio station, City One Zero One Six, and I was broadcasting from an amusement park here in Dubai called Bollywood Parks. Yeah. And this is in the middle of, middle of the COVID. Yeah. I am like buried under three masks because I'm paranoid like that. Yeah. <laughs> and you were in a like a, a park, so obviously all the more, right? All the more, exactly. Yeah. The people around and all that. And Avantika uh, comes to me. No. I don't know it's Avantika, right? So this this young person I thought was a college kid, by the way, comes to me <laughs> and says, nice. "No, nothing. No, hi, no, hello." And she comes to me and she says, "Price mil rahe kya? <laughs> Price de rahe kya? <laughs> gift kya? Gift kya?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Who is this entitled college kid who's asking for prizes and gifts?" I was like, "No, nothing. Kuch nahi hai mere paas." And then I later I realized that that you know, was you. Yeah. That that was you, and that you were a mom. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you know you're married, and then you're an influencer, and all that. And then of course later when I came to know, did you feel less like? Um, did you feel that I was entitled because I had all these things going for me, or do you think? No, I didn't even know who you were, right? Oh, you okay. so you had a backpack, I remember, and you looked really beautiful. Thank you. And I'm like you're a spoiled rich brat, uh -huh. completely entitled, who yeah. is just like you know who who is delivered things at at a drop of a hat, <laughs> and is so entitled that she's asking for gifts and prizes. <laughs> It's actually my dream to win something on radio, and um, so the other day I met Pavitra and I was asking her, "Yar, kabi to kuch radio pe jita do, please." Because I want to just win something on radio. Okay. I have never won anything on. Radio. I remember the last time when I was doing Antakshi on yeah. on on the radio. Oh, yeah, yeah, I messaged you, right? <laughs> I want to play. Mujhe bhi jita do. I love. I want to know though, where does this confidence come from to just like walk up to people and say prizes mil rahe hain? Because I know you are that kind of person and you would do that. For your business as well, with, with, you know, most of the people are very shy to even strike that yeah, conversation. Yeah. Where is this confidence coming from? Um, so to be honest with you, I do not know where it comes from, mm. obviously. But I have been that kind of a person. If let's say, if I'll ask you and you'll say no, then my to kuch nahi jayega. But you said yes, then you'll get something. But is there no fear of being judged that the samne wala banda mujhe saara judge karega? No, I'm in my head a very like a good person. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah. Yeah. See, like so, I judged you as an entitled person, right? Yeah, please do. And you're okay with that? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. With entitlement, maybe not because I'm not entitled, but confident, yes. But, like you know, you have to be like, is this person really asking me for this? And then I would always ask. Let's say if I walked into Bika Nair and I have ordered. So the other day I ordered for. Uh, Sarso ka saag etc. Okay, mm. I really wanted to eat sambar. Mm. Mm. So I asked him, "Thora sambar de do ke side mein." Mm. Now he gave me the sambar. Mm. If I didn't ask, I would not get that sambar. Mm. Mm. So it's as simple as that. Even if it's like a a thing, but if I want it and I just keep it to myself, it's helping nobody. True that. My because I am such a people pleaser. Yeah. And I'm constantly thinking 
what the other person is thinking about yeah. me ki who is this person who's asking for extra sambar who is this person who's asking for prizes i will judge myself before the other person judges me so i find it very fascinating yeah. that the freedom with which the confidence with which you go to people yeah and like demand things <laughs> give me sambar and you get sambar has it ever happened that you have asked something and then you of did course. not yeah yeah of course how did you feel then just okay like you know <laughs> now the ball is in their court you also did not make me win anything i did not, not yeah, yeah. Yeah, until now, I have known you for three years now. Now that you can't, cannot win. Now you're my friend. Oh, is that so, a yeah, clause? So yeah, that's a Can clause. We break this friend family and, <laughs> and just win. To something. win a hamper on the radio station. Please, I want to win something. That's the value of my friendship. Yeah. A hamper. You're going to break my friendship. Yeah, please, and then we can be friends again. You know, <laughs> after like if we enjoy whatever you're going to give. Nice, nice. We should figure that out. So okay, I'm going to begin with a very interesting incident that happened like a. Couple of months ago, I was conducting a public speaking class and a radio class for young kids. And after the class got over, I was speaking to these kids as to what they want to do in life and all that. And very interestingly, a nine, eight, or nine-year-old boy, I was asking him what you want to do in life, and he said something really interesting. He said, "I want to be an influencer." So I was like, "Okay, legit, but do you know what it entails to be an influencer? What is the job?" And he said something really interesting that kind of stayed with me. He said, "Yeah." you look into the camera and you sell products yeah you know as some simple very basic definition but so on point right um i'm going to get into how the word influencer has kind of changed over a period of time yeah uh, when i was growing up but but i want to begin asking you what does influencer mean what does an influencer do and what makes you an influencer okay um okay i'll start from the top what does it mean okay it just means that you so you are an influencer i would like to establish that okay because every time you put something mm. that you're cooking mm. i'm influenced to go to my kitchen and cook okay that's the definition of an influencer mm. so let's say if i'm raising a child and i'm have work and uh, there are people out there mm. who feel guilty about like stepping into work because mm. they just had a child mm. uh, looking at me is possible that they they'll be influenced mm. and they think this is okay so what it does is that it makes it normal for other people to do whatever you're doing mm. okay could be like i don't know there are a lot of indian influencers who go in the trains and they are dancing mm. now this might look like one of the most absurd things that mm. why are you dancing in the train etc mm. but because you see that courage mm. you prob i'm not saying you'll go and dance in the train mm. Mm. but there's a possibility that you will be okay with the thought kaisa hota like mm. you know these are the mm. things that are done mm. so it depends on what like sect or whatever in whatever I don't know genre of hmm. influencing you are doing. Hmm. What what was the other question? So the other question was what makes you an influencer? Yeah. So I am very honest. Like hmm. you know I am very authentic. Hmm. And authenticity is something that misses from the internet. Hmm. Okay. So everybody is trying to make a facade like you know they would want to have a face like either they are too luxury or they are too uh clean or they are too proper like I was just talking to somebody my friend and mm. she's a mom. She kept talking a lot about her child, okay? So there was a lot mm. of things etc. But if you go on the internet and you see my account, I would not pretend to be a perfect mom. Mm. I'm struggling. Like mm. you know like I wake up like you mm. know I I wake up at 10 o'clock. Who's taking care of the children? My family is. Right. So that is what makes me an influencer because I'm very authentic. This is what I think it is. I'm going to delve a little deeper into this, yeah. but I'm going to go back to the definition of influencer. So correct me if I've got this wrong. Um, got uh, right. Got no, it. if I'm correct me if I've got this wrong. Okay. Um, um, does influencer mean that if you have a voice in any department, be it cooking, be it writing, be it dancing, singing, whatever, uh, then people do look up to you? Yeah. Uh, and if you have an authentic voice, like in your case. people do look up to you and then and then that's how you travel yeah. um that that's correct right yeah. so 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 to begin with you have to have a voice and an authentic voice you spoke about authenticity what is your department uh as an influencer like for me it is it could be cooking or traveling yeah. or whatever yeah in your department um I, I, were you a model at any point in time yeah so is that your is that your department okay so you know how it happened lokesh so what happened is that i got married to dujoy hmm. okay 
and internet was just happening at that time instagram was just happening mm. and our proposal blew up like to another level it was mm. covered by all like we were on the front page of mirror and all these things when the proposal happened wow i haven't so, even seen that yeah okay okay, okay so, wow so what happened is that we were supposed to get married uh, in 2016 and just before that dujoy uh, did a proposal on twitter and then on instagram instagram used to be a very small entity at that point right. time, okay but twitter he already had a million followers okay the joy for all those people is an author is a writer yes my husband and her yes. husband yes yeah, yeah yeah so i love proposals because i worked with emirates so it was a big deal everybody would ask oh where's your ring where what hap- what mm. was a proposal okay so ring is another story i'll tell you later mm. but for proposal he had like a lot of pressure going on so he had to also make it different hmm. okay now him being so creative etc so he thought of an idea what he would do is that he will ask the fo- his followers to ask me to marry him mm-hmm. make sense right okay so this trended for a week yeah so marry you- me avantika was trending for a week wow on all platforms and you're being tagged as well in all those yeah, tweets and all that tagged, okay. yeah so then people got curious to who avantika was okay mm-hmm. so then i got like a heads up as opposed to anybody mm-hmm. who would get because the whole of india slash mm-hmm. world was mm-hmm. like you know kind of okay what, what is mm-hmm. this question why is this person asking and it also got little bit of negative this thing so why is this guy bullying this female to marry her Okay. because they don't know that you guys were yeah, dating yeah like yeah as well mm-hmm. and then we were hamara car chhap gaya like this is happening in february our wedding was in march so aisa nahi like we were not mm-hmm. getting married he just wanted a proposal so that right. the woman feels nice right, right? yeah right. and i was on the flight by the time i landed then the whole like the like my phone stopped working because it was pop 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 like yeah hmm. and uh, so this is what happened okay so this is how i actually got famous So you know that one minute fame is there, etc. Right. Like, you know when people just do something right. and, and then they get famous. So this is how I got famous initially. Hmm. Now what was going well for me is because I was traveling the world. I was with Emirates at that right. time, Capital. and I had the opportunity. So every time I would go to a city, I would make sure that I would do an activity. Hmm. So let's say if I'm in London, so I would check what is happening in London. Is hmm. there a play which is happening? Hmm. Is there something like a food trail or food trail or like you know um, um uh, witchcraft uh, some show like you know some stupid things like mm. i would just okay. be like okay let me go to camden like you know some stupid areas or something mm. i would do because each and every time i would do something i would not sit in my hotel room and be like which mm. alert and whatever mm. uh but i'm <laughs> but anyway mm. So I would do an activity. Why? Why would you say बचाने चाहिए थे? That led to a flourishing career. Yeah, yeah. But we did not know. Like we did not know because see now what happened is that travel has become about what you're showcasing. Mm. It's no longer about experiencing, experiencing. things. Mm. But I'm talking about like mm. when it wasn't about fair. Fair. So you you wish that you had experienced those things instead of yeah, no. Uh, sorry. I'll, I'll, I, okay. So पैसे बचाने चाहिए थे मतलब Like it used, it used to cost, right, to go out. Mm. I did not save enough money mm. with them. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Not like experiences. That uh, okay. I wanted okay. to do that. Right, right. So I had a loan. Once I paid the loan, then I was like, now I'm mm. going to really like have fun. Mm. So this is what happened. Okay. So then all these people who came to my account were like, okay, so she goes to Zurich one day, and the next day she's in London, and then she manages to like eat or like a cheese fondue, and then does like. Camden Market in London. So people got interested in the content I was giving. Fair. Okay, so th- that also brought value. Now what happens with internet is that, uh, or Instagram or any other platform mm. is that it doesn't work on the views. It mm. works on the shares. Mm. So the more people would like, you know, uh, share all mm. this content with each other, mm. then the more views or more things Cost. will come. Right. Yeah? So my content was pretty shareable. Let's mm. say if you're planning a holiday. Mm. Hmm. to prague you'll go to avantika's account and you'll find like hmm. five things she's done in hmm. prague hmm. before it used to be a- five things fair before even it was a listicle thing that that yeah, yeah, trended you yeah. started doing it yeah. and i was thing. like okay like you know this time i was here two weeks back and now. then that kind of made you popular on that made me 
very popular. So, two questions now. Okay, so this is very interesting. I asked you what, what's your expertise on social media and I remember this very clearly once the second time when I met you, I was like, how come you have so many followers on social yeah. media? And you said, because it, you know, I, I got married to a famous author. Yeah. You know, you're so honest and you're so authentic uh -huh. about it. There are people who would, who would make all kinds of stories. You no, know, I work very hard and I create this kind of content, that kind of content. You were very honest, Ki Bhai. I got married to a famous did, yes. author and that's how I got followers. But, okay, my second question is, love the honesty. Second question is that, were you conscious of the fact that you've got so many followers and hence there was a certain, not pressure, but certain need that now that I'm traveling and I'm with cabin, with, with, I'm with Emirates and I'm a cabin crew, I might as well document my life so that those new followers that I've got, was it, was it for the followers or was it just like you were doing it because no, you were doing so it? No, so that's what, I was doing it already. And people, okay. And then I got audience. Okay. Okay. And then they stayed. Okay. Okay. And then the audience were not limited to just Dujoy's readers because the content was pretty good. And mm. then we were also pushed by Instagram in the beginning. Right. Because we were one of the first few people who started doing this. Right. So then I got verified in 2018. So then I would go on a flight and somebody will ask me for my Instagram. They'll be like, how come you're verified? And I said, because Instagram verified us, mm. like, mm. how does mm. it work, etc. Mm. Then they'll question you, can we also get verified? And I said, sure, but I do not know how. <laughs> 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 but that was the thing. Like we were, we were known um, in the Fair. early stage Fair. of this. Thing. So, okay. So your voice or your expertise on social media is one, of course, married to a famous person yeah. and two, living an authentic life. Uh, showing the luxurious side of life uh, in a way because you're traveling to different countries yeah. and eating yeah. fancy food and all that. That brings me to the next question, Avantika. I was, uh, this is going to be a little layered question, so stay with me, okay? Okay. Instagram focuses a lot on aesthetics. Okay. Instagram focuses a lot on beauty. When I make food videos, you have told me so many times it has to look beautiful, it has to look yeah. beautiful because that's how you stand out and all that, right? Beauty has been associated with women for time immemorial, right? For the longest time. Uh, we always talk about how the man should be successful and the woman should be beautiful, right? Mm. The whole, they've different phrases, different terms like trophy wife and all that. They have been rooted in women being beautiful, right? Now, this is very interesting because we have a platform that focuses on beauty. Mm -hmm. And then that's a game changer for women because women are getting more traction because being beautiful on social media. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's a reason why Katrina Kaif has double the followers than Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. She has like 78 million followers and Shah Rukh Khan has like some 45, 46 million followers. And that's, I, I checked actually for, for the sake of this okay. podcast. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's true across uh, generations. Varun Dhawan has some 45 uh, million followers. Alia Bhatt has some 82 million followers. Okay. It's like the numbers are like double. For okay. women, yeah, right, because because we are so beauty obsessed, and Instagram pushes beautiful things and all that. Now this works in the favor of women because we've been asking for gender equality for all these years, pay parity for all these years. Uh, a Katrina Kaif will not be paid the same amount as a Shah Rukh Khan in a movie. But I'm thinking when a brand goes to Katrina Kaif for a shout out on her social media, she can demand. She should. I don't know whether she is or not, but she should demand more almost double the price than Shah Rukh Khan because she has double the numbers. Tito with Ali Bhatt, Varun Dhawan and all that. So this is one side of the story where it's really pushing and giving agency to women that they have been fighting for all these years. Okay. The flip side is that because it focuses on beauty and women have been fighting that fight as well. What is beautiful? What is not beautiful? Conventional, dark, fair, tall, slim, fat. Who is beautiful? Who is not beautiful? That's one side of the struggle. The other side is, of course, it leads to the objectification of women. People don't really see beyond their beauty and they just objectify them as beautiful things. Have you ever given a thought about this? Because you are a conventionally beautiful woman. Thank you. You know, you're tall, you're fair, you're successful. Do you think that Instagram is changing the game for women or is it, is it putting more pressure on women to be beautiful? What's your take on it? Do you think, sorry, this is, I just, for the first time, uh, I've heard all this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've never thought through this. Yeah, yeah. But now listening to you, do you think it is possible that it's easier to please men as opposed to pleasing women? Because if, let's say, if Katrina Kaif has been followed by a lot of men, 
it's just easier to get their uh, following as opposed to women uh yes largely yes yeah but see okay when i started doing radio they told me it was really funny i was once having a chat with my programming head and i was like i made an observation in india across most of the breakfast shows i was doing the breakfast show and most of the breakfast shows were done by men Mm -hmm. So I asked him, I was like, how come we don't really have a female breakfast jock? And my programming director said, because the consumer is always a man. And I was like, why is a man always the consumer? And he said, because they have the spending power. They are the ones who are earning. Most of the women are not earning. Okay. So keeping that context in the question that you asked, even on Instagram, because it is a market place where people are selling products or whatever, the consumer is largely the man. Okay. So when a woman is on Instagram and the consumer is a man, and because if a woman is beautiful, then she tends to get more followers and more traction. A lot of a lot of my guy friends, you know, say that we we spend like five hours, you know, in creating this reel, and it has got only this much traction. But if a woman puts like a picture of her nail, and then that gets like millions of likes and all that. Yeah. So I guess the consumer is the man largely, and that's the reason women get more traction on the yeah, social media. Yeah, or else, products. like I just think like it's just easier to please men as opposed to. What, what do you mean by that? Easier to please men? Uh, like I just think like it, I don't know. Your your time is valuable. Now, what pleases you? If let's say a nail pleases you, then you will like that picture. Like for a woman, there's a possibility that she'll think, oh, this color is not nice. or this you know they'll get into details of like mm. how the nail should be or what is the color that that will mm. it's also comes with like your personal favoritism etc mm. so it comes to like a taste because women when they are looking at other women they are always looking at like and this is uh, uh, this is in a different direction i just want to say like in objectifying things let's mm. say if you are a, if you're saying oh i don't know <laughs> no, I know, I know. See, I'm so sorry to like kind of catch you off guard because we, a lot of people don't really think. I, I, I just I, think I'm, like it's easier to please men, and like it's a little harder to please women for nothing. Like I don't know. Hmm. Like yeah. Like and obviously now you you saying women are more critical of other women. So if you put up a picture of yourself, not critical, not critical. Just uh, they want more. Like what is she wearing hmm. now? Now let's say if. there is a woman and uh, she looks at another person and she's wearing a very nice dress now her beauty is not okay it's great she's beautiful etc mm. but her dressing sense will also go back to my closet and i'll be like this dress is not that great she could have worn that like you know she could have dressed with this and it would have looked even better for mm. her right but for a man maybe it's very simplistic it's a very one dimensional mind ki yaar achhi dikh rahi hai nice body click like right so maybe it's that okay but that's only in one department because possible right because let's say how would you react to food if you looked at a recipe and i looked at a recipe yeah w- would men and women react differently to a recipe absolutely because women men are going to be less judgmental and yeah no Uh, no men are not going to be judgmental they probably won't engage so much because maybe it's complex so they don't relate to it okay wow yeah so then because you are like put curry patta and rai and if i send my husband to the kitchen he'd be like what is curry patta and rai you know normal household like a uh, normal this thing then women will be like ha curry patta rai i can make this right now so it depends on who you are catering to as well hmm. but i personally my this thing is that m- most of my followers are women hmm. and this is the reason why i haven't got into a space where anybody has made me uncomfortable like once in like 6 months somebody sends me a weird message hmm. but other than that like i only have like people really cheering up for me which i think is largely the case in the ua because i think the rules are pretty much in place and nobody really trolls yeah. people and, much yeah and india as well like you know the people who are in like my indian followers mm. as well they are very kind like you won't believe how kind mm. people are mm. like, be like oh i'll just put a like a blurry something and they'll be like mm. rooting for me okay so let me let me simplify this question um do you think that in that women have an edge over men on instagram especially because it focuses on beauty yeah why not and should be like that okay then does it uh 
does it take away from Avantika? Do you think there's a lot of focus on Avantika to show her beauty on Instagram? Whereas there could be so many other things around Avantika that I could explore. Because Instagram is rewarding beauty, so you're pushing your, you know, your beautiful pictures, your beautiful fashion trends or reels or whatever. But there could be a side of Avantika that you're not showcasing because that's not in demand and that's limiting you. I'll give you an example. I think you're very funny. I think your comic timing is really funny. I was watching your TEDx talk as well. You had like really three fun, funny moments, you know. Oh, did you watch my TEDx? I did. I mean, for, for the podcast, right? Yeah. And then, um, recently you put up a post where you were acting like your husband while picking up books. Yeah. Which I thought was very funny. Yeah. Now, I don't really get to see that side of Avantika often. Yeah. Because the focus is on beauty. So, do you think it limits you? But it's also because in my head, I'm pretty. You know, I'm not funny. <laughs> it's also because of that. Like, it's also my perception of myself. Like, you know, you'll... We'll go back to the first meeting. The the entitlement also maybe comes from a place where I think, yeah, I'm very beautiful. Who will I make? You know? <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> no, I mean, thank you for being so honest. No, but genuinely, I, I in my head, I am. Uh, I look a certain way, and I do think I have pretty privilege, and that's okay. Like hmm. I enjoy that, no problem. Which you should, as you must. Yeah. But does do you think? That, that that idea of you is also limiting you to explore other funny side of Avantika. I'm very lazy also. <laughs> <laughs> to shoot that video also will take me a while. So if somebody just installs a camera and just records it, it'll be easier. Uh, but otherwise to like make funny content takes more acting, etc. Hmm, it's hmm. just that like and... So you don't think it's limiting you? No, no, no. no, no. You're happy yeah, being the pretty space and yeah. you want to exploit that as much? Yeah. In fact, like I have always that's what I'm saying like my journey was always about like showing my experiences showing mm. my things and showing me in different clothes because if I'm let's say go to New York I'm dressed in a mm. New York style of way and then people would be like Haan, chalo, aisa pehen lete, mm. now like obviously I'm so much older I'm eight years down the line and now I'm not 30 I'm mm. 38 mm. so obviously my body has changed my face has changed and there I think earlier we were talking off the camera that how younger people are also coming in so obviously there, there's a lot which has changed mm. but doesn't mean that I have changed a lot as a person mm. Mm. it's just going to sound so vain yeah no no it doesn't yeah. sound vain at all yeah. it doesn't sound it, yeah. it sounds very authentic and very yeah. honest Perhaps one of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast so with you because too. because you're very forthright and you know yeah. you don't really think no 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 you don't really hide things you don't yeah. really pretend you know you are what you are yeah. uh, let's get into that space of uh, competitors of younger influencers yeah um, being an influencer at 38 uh, and a mom of two um, how have things changed ever since you started when you were 30 do you think there there's a certain clientele that 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 you catered to at 30 and now those clients have dropped out because you are a certain shape now, you are a certain body now at 38. Absolutely. And what are the insecurities that you are facing competing with 18-year-old, uh, 20-year-old influencers? So, competition, uh, okay. So, my content is not titillating, okay. So, hmm. if it was titillating, I would be competing with a 18-year-old or a 17-year-old. Does that make sense? Are you saying that 18 and 17 year olds are making titillating content? No. I mean, to say is that if my body was okay. in a okay. matter, then obviously I would be compared to a younger, prettier, hmm. uh, I don't know, hmm. more like active, hmm. uh, can dance better person. But my content is not that. Hmm. It's It doesn't cater to 18 year olds. Hmm. 18 year old can watch and be like, Hmm. That's the only thing. But my my audience is, I think, right now, is all of those people who would maybe think of doing all these things at this age or looking like this at this point. Like now, like a lot of people say, oh, you know, you're working so hard. You've like, you know, you're you're working out and hmm. you've lost so many kilos. Now my audience is that. Hmm. That who have had children, hmm. Hmm. Ke do ho ab unko bhi hmm. workout hmm. like you know, this is what their goal is. So relatability. Relatability and also your audience is changing. Hmm. What you're thinking is that, and 
brands also i'm a better bra- for brand as opposed to an 18 year old i'll tell you why because the kind of brands that i can cater to let's say if i cater to a kids brand mm. i can cater to a anti aging cream mm. i can cater to a detergent mm. but an 18 year old can't do all of this mm. so my my spectrum has broadened mm. if not short interesting yeah so mm. it's there is no competition because they'll have their maybe fashion clothes maybe they'll do trips Hmm. etc hmm. great because that's their audience 18 hmm. year old ke paas paise bhi nahi hote hmm. you know if that's their audience i mean if not 18 let's say 25 year old let's say a yeah. 30 year old let's, let's yeah. say navantika who is at 30 and you are a 38 yeah so do you think there's no competition in terms of like uh, just uh, uh, looking at of course like you know we look inferior to as opposed to what we did at 30 or hmm. 18 hmm. or whatever hmm. and that would never change hmm. but like i'm just saying as like if this was a place where i would be earning money from i'm just saying that mm. this is also not a bad place to be at because i can't look back and be just sad about when you know, like look but pressure hai nahi hai nahi hai that you might lose out on clients that once uh found a uh, 30 year old avantika more appealing exactly that's what i said now the only brand that will diminish with the years would be let's say a jewelry brand yeah because maybe i'll get all wrinkly and all like you know and then eventually the jewelry brand won't be there okay saying so you lose a few brands but you gain many yeah. more other brands way more way more because you are now in when what what happens is when you become a lifestyle influencer you have so much to display hmm like you know you have a house you have your uh kids accessories mm-hmm. that you use so all these brands mm-hmm. are there and they mm-hmm. pay okay mm-hmm. as cool 30 men good to know yeah good yeah. to know because i always wonder that there could be a lot of pressure and insecurities for do a 30 big I do because I, I mean I'm I'm a 44 year old man. You're right? 44. I'm 44. Okay. And 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 see I'm not I'm not facing any pressure because I'm kind of happy in my own space. Also, social media is not my regular job. It's yeah. not paying my bills. My job on the radio is paying my bills, and I'm creating content on social media not to like you know get more clients or whatever. I'm doing it for my own passion of cooking, traveling, fashion, whatever comes naturally to me. But if this was my bread yeah, and butter, so, yeah, I would be flipping because. See, you know because also because you are thinking you need to be a fashion this thing the moment you realize your strength no mm. there is no looking back mm. see because you what is your strength right now lokesh you are a 44 year old who has a lot of experience in radio right so if you go ahead and sell these master classes to people right. online right right if i am a person who wants to be a radio jockey mm. and if i go on your channel and be like These are the four things that you need to do, hmm. or in a life of a radio jockey. No, they no, nobody wants to pay. I tried doing this during yeah. COVID and all that. People, people are very chindi. Ah, uh, yeah, they don't want to pay for. Don't don't make it paid. Make content out of it. Event. And, and then that let that build up and pay for you eventually. Yeah. See, uh, because <clears throat> first thing is never to like the first object. of an influencer should never be about making money hmm. the moment you do that you have fallen off the ladder okay hmm. because money will come money will come aise na aise aayega like 100% aayega hmm. thoda ya zyada it will happen hmm. you just need to do what you love and you're good at and add value to people's hmm. life hmm. once you start doing that hmm. why am i saying that you know all these brands will come hmm. to me is because if let's say if i'm waking up and like you know my child had a, a a rash okay because of a diaper and if i go in and tell people listen i've had two children mm-hmm. i ha- my child had a rash baby rash which is a normal thing mm-hmm. you know a mother would share like if you're talking to a mom right. and mom and mom right. and you're having coffee and you'll be like what do you do usually mm-hmm. what do you do to get it right mm-hmm. and they'll tell you okay you know i use this cream this diaper works mm-hmm. and uh, these many hours mm. of diaper changing will help mm. now if i go ahead and put this information then people will learn now automatically the diaper brand will be so compelled to come to me mm. it will happen so first thing is to bring value to people ki yeah. pehle like you know share your journey mm. share that <clears throat> okay these 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 mm. things work mm. okay then sooner or later mm. these people will come to you it happens fair, like that fair you spoke about your kids you know a few times 
yeah. in the last 10-15 minutes and I want to talk to you about share renting. There's a term called share renting. I don't, I share, don't, renting? share renting. I don't know. So it means parenting and parents who share their kids' lives on social media. Okay. Now there's a huge debate that's happening in the West, by the way, for yeah. a couple of years, especially in America, where they're talking about all these influencers and content creators who are uh, who are catering to a lot of baby brands and using their kids, you know, in their videos and all that. Now, a few of the kids, uh, when they're like 14, 15 in America, have uh, have sued their parents okay. for using their lives and their journeys for you know, create, getting money and all that. Um, so, okay, just to again give a little more context to this, in the entertainment industry, you know, back in the day when child uh, actors were a norm, 15% yeah. uh, of the total earning uh, would be kept aside for the child's education or for his future. So that was a norm in America. Now, because uh, influencer industry is such a new industry, there were no norms, there were no... Uh, rules in place and hence a lot of kids are getting angry in America and they're like, you know, they, you used our lives and all that. So that's one side of it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, are you, whatever money that you get from baby brands and all that, do you keep it aside like a part of it for your <laughs> daughters or how does it, how does it work? So, um, this is going to sound patriarchal, but I do not have my money, okay? My husband takes care of everything in terms of money because uh, I do not have a very good relationship with money. Um, what, it, what do you mean? Uh, just do not have a good relationship with money. Do not know what to do with it. Like, uh, do you this splurge? makes me anxious. It makes me anxious. No money and more money makes me anxious. So whatever money is there, I'll give it to him and then he's supposed to invest or etc. And then you're left with no money. So does that make you more anxious? Because no, I always have money. Because <laughs> I have so uh, like I do not have my own money. Forget about uh, what the kids earn. But <clears throat> I'll come. I'll tell you something about this. Okay. Now, uh, using children and uh, in textbook, obviously, it's super duper duper wrong. Okay. But you know the time when you used to go to people's house and then they would make you sit down and then show you albums of their weddings, okay? And then there came a time when the phone started and before the internet uh, era, just 2010 maybe, as mm, first of mm. When the kids used to be born, you will be so obsessed with your children mm. that you would be putting out uh, taking a lot of pictures, you know, whatever normal mm. phones we mm. had, take a lot of pictures, mm. maybe like, you know, even if you're going out, you'll mm. take like cameras, etc. Because when you're looking at your child and, you know, think of it as a parent's point of view, you look at a child and you'll be like, this is the most beautiful thing that has happened to the world. For, forget about anything else. Fair. Okay, You are you are so obsessed with your child that you will be compelled or you have this urge to show it to the world and be like, Dekho mm. Like, you know, mm. and same way, like how people used to do with pictures or Polaroids mm. or mm. albums or normal phones mm. before Instagram, etc. happened. Now, we believe that we are those people. Okay. Mm. For us, like whenever, like, you know, there's a cute moment which is happening between the two daughters, etc., we we register it hmm. okay if we are we, we will film it because we can go back to it now even Ryan and Brahmi so hmm. I uh, those of you do not know hmm. I have uh, a niece my daughter elder daughter hmm. and my younger daughter hmm. now every time my younger daughter wears something which belongs to her sisters right we have it documented right okay because we have like our phones are full with the pictures of the children etc but now the, the only, so I hear you what you're saying. Sorry, yes. No, no, you, okay. you finish, you finish. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll come to that. Sorry. Okay, so what happens is that when you put this out on the internet, mm. okay, um, obviously we do work with brands who mm. want our kids to feature mm. like that. Mm. But uh, personally speaking, we really respect, we ask them, we ask them for their permission. Are you okay to be filmed? And our kids understand that. Mm. They enjoy the process. Mm. They understand that uh, in the school, if somebody asks, mm. what do your parents do? Mm -hmm. They'll be like, oh, my mom is a blogger. Mm. And my father does this. Mm. So they understand what we do. And this also is our work. Okay. And when we put it out there, we'll ask our children. So they, if at any point of time, 
I will not make my child be crying. Of course. And of course. Then, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So to answer your question, um, yes, maybe people are getting it wrong because it's a very thin line. Yeah, it's also very important for you to know when to do what. Hmm. Yeah, like you can't overexpose your hmm. children. Hmm. So I'm not going to make. Sorry. So a couple of things. So you know when you were talking about having pictures in albums and then you know taking pictures on your phone and all that and showing yeah. it to your friends, it's a very closed group. Yeah. But when when those pictures and videos are going up on social media, yeah. it's three hundred thousand people, your followers, yeah. random people in India. In you know, you don't know how dangerous the world is. They yeah. they are looking at your children. So that's one, and of course, there's money also involved. Yeah, and I totally get it, like taking permission, and also it's a very new industry. People are not really haven't really thought it through, and all that. I get it. Uh, the other side of of sharenting that that a lot of research uh, says is that there is a constant uh, dosage of dopamine that the kids are getting from the phones, and they're constantly on the phones, and they're constantly getting their dopamine, you know, from being shot and from being filmed all the time, and that's really affecting their mental health. and while growing up they wouldn't be able to like you know understand other means of getting that happy hormone yeah. you know so have you ever given that a thought that yeah i'll i'll tell you two things about uh, it very quickly so one is that we used to do youtube vlogs mm, okay, earlier mm. uh, we did it till 2021 And we had a very good following. The joy of Antika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty-eight thousand subscribers. Yeah, we okay, got used to it. So we used to have really good audience where people really engaged with everything. The moment we stopped is that when we realized that our children are doing things because the camera is on. Okay, so if they are laughing a little bit more because the camera is on, mm. or they are doing little extra so that. they know that they are getting filmed mm. and they were very young at that mm. that's when my husband sat down with me is like we are going to stop vlogs because it's going to impact the way our kids behave mm. i can see the change so mm. we are going to stop that so we stop that mm. okay so answering your question mm. dopamine Fair. and um i'm very blessed my kids do not have any access to phones or ipads etc the maximum that mm. they do is they watch tv mm. that too in a control environment when everybody is sitting here and mm. then they are watching the mm. tv mm. so we are still um, I, i don't know protected mm. but then the world is going to be like that mm. it's not like mm. you know because i'm a blogger mm. my children will have that dopamine this thing right all the children will of have course. dopamine of course so like how do you refrain from doing that right you right just limit you just delay mm. till wh- when that happens mm. because forget about them mm. Mm. us In no, the middle of the, yeah, 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 like you <laughs> know, right. forget about uh, them. Like we wake bit, up scrolling, yeah. we yeah. go to sleep yeah. scrolling. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm so happy that you said that because see, again, that that's putting a thought across that you and Durjoy sat down to understand that your kids were behaving a little differently when the cameras are on. So that's a good thought to put across in this podcast for people to like kind of at least yeah. think about. Um, First time I made sense, huh? When I spoke about Durga. No, you mean why do you say that? Why do you have this self deprecatory humor, Avantika? You're making sense all through. I wouldn't be sitting down with so you if it didn't, didn't make sense. Um, okay, let's talk about Durga. Okay. Fascinating love story. Thank you. You slid into his DMs. Yeah. Because he was writing books, and one of his first books. Had a character called Avantika, yeah, which you highly resonated with, highly identified with. It's my name. It's your name, but also the character of yeah. the character. Yeah, was you. Yeah. Tell me, tell me the story. It's so fascinating. <clears throat> so uh, at that time, like you know, we used to fly a lot to India, and then TV serials were like a big hit. Internet mm. was still happening. Which year is this? Uh, I think it is two thousand nine. Okay. Okay. Um, and you're flying with Emirates. I was flying with Emirates. Nah. So we used to pick up books and like you know read a lot of these Indian authors and they would talk about India and they'll be uh, based in India. So as opposed to if you read like uh, Jane Austen or something, mm. they're all based in West. Mm. Uh, this was a new trend which was happening and we were picking up a whole lot of mm. Indian authors. You are uh, you stay in Dubai and Durga is in India. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So me and like a bunch of my cabin crew friends who were all Indians nice. used to bring books each time and then we would exchange. Mm. Okay, th- good times, yeah. Mm. Now nobody does that. Anyway, so we I read this book and I was like, "Oh my god, this a uh, book is on me because this girl is so much like me and her name was Avantika and that really I thought in my head i was like okay this is me and i need to really find just like i was P- like pareli ke par pucha puch liye the kya kya chal jayega they didn't give you the credit ha huh? <laughs> yeah they did not so then i messaged uh, the joy and then i was like okay um, 
Yeah. Message him on what? On on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah, I told him. I said, oh, I love you, and then he said, I like, love you straight away. Yeah, yeah. But because you are you like a fan, like not like a like a person. Not, not a romantic, but I love you as an as an author. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm not sure about your feelings, but yeah. <laughs> Now it's it's blurry. अब क्या पता है दस साल पहले क्या सोची थी? But anyway, uh, this happened and he was kind enough and he said, oh, add me on BBM and I added him on BBM. Then we started talking and then made sense. Then everything came together. How old are you at this time? Two thousand nine. Calculate कर लो ना आप ही. My maths thirty eight. So twenty seven. Twenty seven. Twenty eight. Yeah. Was he the first person you ever dated? No, so what were the things that you were looking for in a man? The, what were your green flags? What were you looking for in a man to settle down with? What was it about Durjoy that you said this is the man I need to settle down with? So I did not know Durjoy as Durjoy at that time. Okay, so I read this book. Okay, and I remember this because I have vivid memory. So I remember just reading the book, and in my living room at that time in Dubai, I was just sitting, lying down halfway, and then thinking. यार अगर ये मिल जाएगा तो बहुत लाइफ शॉर्ट हो जाएगी लाइक यू नो दिस इज माई थॉट ओके दिस इज वॉट आई नीड इन माई लाइफ आई डो नॉट नो वॉट एग्जैक्टली वॉज इट वॉज इट जस्ट जस्ट होपलेस रोमांस और वॉज इट लाइक यू नो अ स्टडी पर्सन एंड एट दैट टाइम रूजो वो स्टिल ऑल्सो स्टिल जस्ट गेरिंग फेमस नॉट लाइक ही वॉज Hmm. Very established at that time. So clearly you were not going for his fame. You were going for the. Yeah, he was very famous, but okay. he was not as famous. Like okay. he was still very famous. Like okay. he would just put like random pictures of his dimple, and then people are going crazy about it. And I found it difficult to like, hmm. you know, will he like hmm. talk to me because he's got a lot of this female attention. Hmm. But I think he got a little bit more later. Uh, anyway, that's yeah. Okay, so. So, but tell me, like, what were the things you were looking for in a man? Were you just to romance and to, like, pyaar, yar? Twenty seven, twenty eight, me, to wohi soch rahe hote hain. Hmm. So, where did you meet for the first time? We met in Delhi. So, this this happened, right? We started chatting, etc. And then we were like, okay, we have to meet. And I was going for my friend's wedding. Um, once before that, also, I was in India, hmm. and my grandfather died, so I could not meet hmm. him at that hmm. time. I told him I'll come back and meet. Hmm. Then um, this uh, incident happened. Sorry, I think I have something on my eyelash. Anyway, hmm. and then what? The next trip, twenty sixth of November in two thousand nine. That's when like uh, we decided, okay, we're gonna meet. We met. He lived in Dwarka. My Masi used to stay in Dwarka. That's where I used to stay. And uh, I went there, and then he's like, okay, sector four, me ajaan. Then he's like, chalo coffee pina chalte hain. I said, paga. Delhi me kahan coffee pita? Chalo chaat kha kya the? Hmm. Then he's like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was acting like. Uh, That Ranbir Kapoor movie was there, no? Rock star. Uh, uh. It's like, oh, I met this girl. She acts like uh, Nargis Pakri. She behaves like you know, as if she's like all cool and all. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like that. But you are that person. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not putting on a facade. And, and what was your first impression of Durjoy? You know, because usually, uh, especially at that point in time, in 2005 to 2010, there were a lot of these stories. Uh, I would read online that people are meeting online, but when they meet. You know they had like great chemistry and great whatever uh, back and forth going on in mails and chats and all that. But when they meet, there's no chemistry. Did you ever feel that with Durjoy there was like no, was this person different person? No, no. There, um, <laughs> no. He just came in a very small car, and I had a lot of expectations for myself. <laughs> Then I was like, Zen me aaya. <laughs> What were you expecting? Like a mark or something? Yeah, because you know, I I come from humble backgrounds. Okay, so my when I was growing up, my thing was like, if I do not do anything in my life, I'll just marry rich, and my life will be sorted. Okay, uh -huh. and uh, this is how I was um, conditioned at hmm. that time. Hmm. So when I look at the car, I was really disappointed. I was like, what is this? Like you know, I wanted to marry rich. Ab kya karu main? Author se pyar hoga mujhe usse mile se pehle. Anyway, yeah. Oh uh, okay so that was your first impression yeah, yeah. what is this like non impressive behavior no, no, no. why did you he come he was very say? cute and he was very nice we had a lot of fun but i'm just i'm just giving you all fun and it you know what she do, what he told me yeah what that you know the first time when he met you he thought that you were out of his league yeah and i i couldn't quite understand what he meant by that so i was like what do you mean by that so he said you know she's so beautiful and she's so gorgeous and i'm like you have an interesting mind and she has an interesting mind and i think you both are in the same league and all yeah. that you know do you think that you were kind of out of his league um, um, no 
Wait, give me very like tell me very honestly you you're very aware that you're very beautiful right so yeah. did you so, of course i was see the thing is that you should never think like you'll bring value to a person because you look a certain way hmm. okay but that's and how of the world course, operates right and yeah yeah that's fine like but i did i know that i'm very good looking of course yes so were you when you looked at him did you did you think that hey no, i'm better that, looking that, than that that made me feel like i'm going to snatch him from all his female following not like i'm better than hmm. him not like that so do looks matter to you in a relationship would you if if do du- do i feel is a is a stunning man you know yeah. he looks really good and all that but do looks matter to you if if do joy turned out to be a scratchy itchy non conventional first of all i mean i mean why am i who am i to say who's beautiful and who's not but non conventionally okay, yes, looking yeah, person yeah. would you would you go ahead in the in that relationship uh, the thing is that uh, like i said like uh, when i read the book it wasn't about i didn't even know how this person was right. like okay i fell in the idea of love with whatever was written in the book mm. okay so it was very difficult to um think in some direction and be like okay this person has to have a certain lifestyle or you know like i said jo ki ki ya gaadi mein aaya tha ab pyar ho gaya kya karenge so it was not about like how he looked it was about um it just felt i don't know how to tell you this was this beautiful feeling okay lokesh like you know i was like yahi yahi main iske sath hi rahungi like i do not know what was it like i but had but also this... because he looked a certain way or something if he didn't look that and... no he he looked all right at that time Achha. he got on way better because he's aged beautifully so madam avantika has worked on him <laughs> no, no. can we say that no, 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 no. he's just he was cute he was very cute looking but uh. it's not like see i had already seen the world i'll be honest uh. with you i had already seen the world i was living in dubai i had access to the uh, the most beautiful accomplished men here etc but the reason was never that i was looking for Hmm. certain looking man etc i just wanted to feel belonged and romance and hmm. all these things and he was like it felt like he would bring that hmm. and he did and then hmm. everything else married for 8 years now right yeah so one last question about this whole thing yeah. what was about the book about the character that impressed you so much i'll give you the book you give me the book but what what, what are the two traits of the character that you thought were pretty much like you oh about the girl yeah I'll I'll read out the description to you. It'll be nice. Okay. Yeah. I'll genuinely will after this. Acha okay. Yeah. But can you think of like one trait like this was similar that she speaks her mind out or she's sassy or whatever and yeah. some adjective give me something. So even her uh, physical attributes matched mine. That was a dis- description okay. at that time. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There was something. I can't put a finger to it now. but i'll make you read it you sure. understand sure done yeah. then we'll put maybe a ticker here with a yeah. uh, couple of traits yeah. on let okay. me have to find the book that's it okay <laughs> two freelancers living under the same roof yeah he's also a freelancer because he's an author yeah. right how difficult does it get it just uh, it just constantly put you under pressure to be like on your toes that's it not pressure i said but just like You know, no. we have a certain target because we have a lifestyle in Dubai, hmm. and then we have, um, uh, like, I support my family, and then we have kids. Uh, hmm. We have to also look for future, and also understand that this might not last forever. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, for even for the books, you know, the sales change hmm. over the years hmm. because you know how hmm. the books now, like, less people read, etc. Or maybe you said relevance will go, etc. Hmm. So we just have like a certain goal. Okay, this is the amount of money that I need to earn, and then this is the amount of money that he needs to earn to sustain. And we we just try and achieve that. That's hmm. it. is it difficult though? Is it, it like is, it's like uh, it's just taking the bed? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You you guys are managing well. Yeah, we are okay. What does your typical day look like? I wake up hmm. at ten. <laughs> Then go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, I. Um, you know, it's also interesting that you say it. Somebody who's yeah. worked at a call center, somebody who's worked at, who's been a cabin crew for fifteen yeah. years, who has like woken up at odd timings and yeah. slept at odd timings. So I can wake up. Huh. But it's not like I'll be a good person. You'll I'll be... be very groggy. 
throughout. Like I'll be like, oh, utha diya, oh, nee nari. <laughs> You've been very well behaved. <laughs> yeah, I don't. For me, waking up. I don't know. I don't know. I think I've said a few things here and there, and I'm thinking like, did that make sense? Anyway, maybe because of no. sleep. No, no, no. Nah, nah, thik tha, sab kuch thik tha. So yeah, what is a typical day look like? Are you? Waking so up? I wake yeah. up and then I have coffee, etc. If I have work calls, emails, then I answer to that. Then mm. I have a team, and then I get. What does your team consist of? Who yeah. all are there? Uh, so there are three people hmm. uh, who work on social media accounts. Then I have production and editing team. There are also three people. So there are around six people. Okay. So what I do is I in the morning then I get on a call with them and then I'll be like, okay, these all are the, uh, the things that you all need to do. And they're very cute, and they listen sometimes. Mm, mm. <laughs> and then I just be like, okay, this this all has to be done, and uh, get the production team to do all these things. Mm. And then we have an agenda for the day. Mm. Either I email them or we get on a call, whatever's easier. Mm. Th- these or sometimes th- I just email them at night, to be honest. Mm. So that like I my the night day. Yeah. Mm. So I just schedule it for the morning. So then they wake up and they have everything written, and then. I do not have to worry. Then I'll just get. These people call. are freelancing for you, or are they on no, a payroll? No, they are. They are on payroll. They're on payroll. Yeah. Okay, and 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 do you also have a manager who who fixes client meetings and brand deals and all that? Or that manager you, is me. You do it yourself. Yeah. So what is that process like? So for uh, agency work, what happens is that you just constantly need to find ins and just keep pitching to different people. So it's pretty. uh monday like that and how do you find these brands like on online on do you do, you do cold calls cold mails uh i do not do cold mails i wish i did that but i do find them sometimes on linkedin and then somebody knows somebody so it's and you know to be honest with you i'll be honest okay when i started my agency i did not know it will be an agency it mm. just did it because there was something that had to be done to sustain a life exactly mm. but with god has been so 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 kind lokesh you won't believe like from the first go mm. i had whatever work i did because i did with the utmost honesty and so much hard work that it paid off and just that kept growing mm. so it's always been like kisne dekha they asked like who did this mm. and then the other person recommended ki okay you can try this or like for influencers as well mm. because i know everyone mm. like you know all mm. influencers etc so it's easier for the brands to work with me because mm. i'm not just a marketing person mm. but i'm also like i'm also sitting sipping the tea with you mm. you mm. get it like mm. that's also a great advantage mm. you remember when i gave you that beard oil <laughs> and i asked you to do a story and then you're like i don't even have beard and i was like i just need to show it to the brand can you do it yeah. and i made you do it yeah, so yeah. that also is an advantage right for the brand because right. i have a relationship with you right. and which is the same for you right yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so yeah. Um, yeah cool that's how it works how tired are you on a scale of 1 to 10 i'm not tired influencer industry has grown from a 1.7 billion us dollar industry in 2016 to a 22 to 25 billion dollar in 2023 that's where we stand exponentially like 12% you know increase that's like massive yeah um where do you see yourself in the next 5 years in this growing industry do you see yourself growing as an influencer or do you see yourself growing your business in the industry what what is your goal uh, that's my one question and my second question is what is the what is the influencer culture like i see a lot of influencers liking and commenting and sharing each others content uh, and i see that very often is that the culture like to kind of support each other um so that you get more traction and all that yeah or is it is it does it also have its own s- sense of insecurity that the other influencer is doing better and i'm losing out on deals and all that that's my second question okay so you remember how like newspapers ads were so relevant at some point of time mm. okay so everybody would spend like millions on newspapers ads mm. or like outdoors mm. or like you know some sort of hoardings and mm. stuff mm. Now what has happened is that that magazine or the newspapers come to your phone. Right. Okay. And obviously if you are running an ad, let's mm. say if you want to run a Google ad, okay, mm. the cost of a Google ad to reach the right audience mm. will be way more still as opposed to working with an influencer. Mm. Okay? Mm. So let's say if you are spending a 
on a Google ad mm. to reach one person, mm. you'll spend the ten and you'll still reach five people with an influencer. Okay. This is still a thing. Okay. Okay. And that is the reason why brands or like startups or any other brands would like work with an influencer. Okay. Because they know that their TG will be reached with this amount of money mm. and that's only fair. Mm. Now it comes to uh, commenting on other influencers. Sorry, so in then in your case, you want to then grow as an influencer oh, versus, yeah. versus growing your business? 100% hopeful of mm. like, you know, like now the war happened. Mm. Okay, so mm. now because of war happened, everything stalled. Mm. Both my business mm. and my branding. Influence. Yeah. Mm. Why? Because obviously this is happening to the world, it's insensitive. So, everybody who was supposed to do an event, etc., that stopped mm, completely. Mm, no events mm, happened. Mm, okay. So, then we lost money on mm, that. Mm. And then, plus, obviously, the posting, etc., then the brands are like, okay, mm, you know. Mm. Uh, and so many brands were cancelled as well. Mm. So, uh, hence, because if the brands were cancelled, we automatically got like, okay, now you, we are cancelled. Mm. And I got a lot of cancellations, by the way, wow. for the brands, etc. And also our events were cancelled. So, I cannot possibly be like 100% sure that one of them will work. Mm. Mm. But I have a feeling that both of them have to work in the similar or this thing. Because what do I do? I do social media marketing. Mm. I do influencer marketing. Mm. So, here I am giving money and here I am receiving money mm. for the same mm. thing. So it has to Balance. be, uh, yeah, it has to work. Both of these two things either work together mm. or both of them will mm. fail miserably. Mm. Mm. Fair, I yeah. hear you. So it's the same market basically. And the culture that you're talking about, helping each other or insecurities? Uh, yeah. uh, see, insecurity is there. Okay, I won't lie about mm. it. There's no lot, lot like, um, because you look at other person and you'd be like, yeah, she has the same setup. She has the same, this thing, but she got this mm. and I did not. Mm. My legitimacy is a little bit more, mm. you'll think. Mm. And there is no problem. Mm. Isha is the most honest feeling ever. Okay. Mm. So, like, I do not think it should be seen in a bad light. Because, like, you know, since the mankind exists, mm. the feeling of insecurity and jealousy exists. Mm. Very human. It's, mm. it's the most human mm. thing. Mm. That's why all the, you know, Mahabharata also happened because mm. of Isha. Mm. Or like, you know, everything has happened because of jealousy. So there is no problem in that. And I do not have a problem saying that I'm jealous of certain people because it's it's normal. I cannot deny that feeling. I'm a human. Give me the names. Who are you jealous of? Top three people. Come on. Um, so I used to be very envious of a mom in Dubai. You know, you're answering these questions. I love you for this. Yeah? A lot of people say, no, I can't give names and all yeah. that. No, I used okay, so, to be. So why? Um, because, you know, her... She would do everything. She was working with all the brands, okay? And I would look at her and be like, why am I not getting all this? I swear to God. And at some point of time, it's not like I was not fond of her. I was very fond of her. Right. I would meet her in a public spot and I'd be like, she's so nice, etc. But sometimes I would sit with my husband and be like, no, and, why? And yeah. it's human. Yeah. Yeah, so 100%. I totally get you. Okay. So then my husband is like, you are envious of her. But first check how much effort is she doing? How much effort is she making in uh, making content? Mm. First get her work ethic and then be jealous of her. And that moment onwards, I was like, I can't possibly do what she does because she is a hustler. Yeah. She starts in the morning yeah. and till night she's just hustling. Yeah. And then the perspective just changed. Right. Right. Then instead of like being envious, I'll be like looking up to mm, her that mm. she deserves this. Mm. If I I want to be a deserving mm, candidate, mm, mm. then I also need to work at As least I, thoda, at least ten percent. you're such a darling man. Thank you so much for saying that because I don't think so anyone ever honestly admits to jealousy and all that. And I think hats off to you that you're such a secure person that you can actually say this on camera. Yeah, I I have told her yeah, also yeah. actually. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, mujhe bada hota tha ki aapko sare brands milte. But anyway, she deserves yeah, the world. Be, yeah. yeah. My last two questions. Uh, okay, I'm going yeah. to quickly wrap this up. Uh, are you a difficult person to work with? Yes. Are, are you a diva uh, no. on set with brands and all no, that? No, no. I'm asking like very pointedly. No, no, no. I'm not a diva, but I'm lazy. So uh, just that's the only thing. Can that be misread as being a diva? Never. 
no because i don't think so because you'll you'll talk to me i'll just be like 10 minute baat karte hain like i have told you <laughs> you know uh, and yeah. it's not because i'm a diva and we've cancelled the shoot so many times mm. it's because i'm lazy okay so i'll ask you why i'm asking this question because over a period of time you know i've done television i've done radio and all that and i'm i'm a very i'm a मैं आप खुद ही अपनी तारीफ करो बट आई एम वेरी प्रोफेशनल वेरी पावर पर्सन फिट मी टू कम एट एनोक्लो आई कम एट एनोक्लो आई कम यू नो आई आई डोंट रियली डिमांड एंड एंड आई एंड आई रियलाइज ओवर अ पीरियड ऑफ टाइम दैट बिकॉज आई एम ईजी टू वर्क विद पीपल टेक एडवांटेज राइट एंड प्लान एंड वट एवर पीपल क्रॉस द लाइन पीपल वॉक ऑल ओवर यू आई गिव यू सिंपल एग्जाम्पल लाइक वेल आई वॉज शूटिंग इन डेली फॉर अ टी वी शो आई वॉज आई वॉज ऑन सेट फॉर लाइक सिक्स आवर्स एंड एंड we passed the breakfast time the lunch time and all that and they didn't even it is the production's job to like you know arrange food for everyone and they had it for their team but they didn't even ask the the freelancers like us to even offer us you know that's mean that that's mean and then and and then i'm thinking maybe i should i mean of course i should you know uh, yeah. order for my own food yeah. so people what i'm asking is that and then when you start when you start asserting yourself it's seen as diva like behavior yeah. when i started asserting myself it was seen that lokesh could be difficult to work with i wanted to explore that so brands can be difficult to work with influencers can be difficult to work with where do you see do you, do you think you are a difficult person to work with or are you just like kind of asserting yourself uh, uh. in a dynamic so uh, you know the only the only thing that i struggle with brands is sometimes they want me to say things that i do not say naturally okay <laughs> like genuinely right. and you know i'm not a script person okay mm. like i cannot stick to a script it's very difficult for me i will say like you will tell me things and i'll make my own version i'll say the gist of whatever you need about. pointers and you can yeah, yeah. improv that's okay mm. um the only thing that i struggle with brands is that when they expect us to do something which is of your character yeah that's when i really put my foot down and be like sorry this is not happening because this is not how i talk give me an example My last question, please. Motherhood and guilt. Yeah. Um. A, a lot of young mothers. You know. I mean, this has been documented in <laughs> multiple articles. Have been spoken about so many times. Uh. Especially for women, it's yeah. very, very difficult being a mom and being yeah. and working as well. I do know that you have a support system in yeah. your mother. Uh. Durjoy is also a, a home dad, a home husband. Yeah. Working from home. That yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, um. Do you feel guilty that you are not able to give enough time to your kids? and how do you deal with that so i'll i'll give you one anecdote with this okay so when i used to work with uh, emrits okay and i just had raina so i started flying when 6 months she was only 6 months and mm. i started flying at that time right people would ask me and be like oh you have a daughter so cute who's looking after her mm. okay so this is a normal thing that society in general and i'm talking about emrits were like maybe people from the whole world are there evolved yeah, yeah mm. evolved mm. worldly mm. from european american australian continent etc but they'll ask you these questions like as if it's the most normal question to ask mm. and if you think of it is nothing to get offended with but i would get offended and be like nobody asked the pilot that mm. for sure the pilot maybe mm. you know the captain definitely has children mm. because maybe the co-pilot doesn't have children because they are still younger mm. but most captains do have children mm. right so nobody will go and ask the captain we like who's looking after your children mm, mm. but because you are a, a woman and you are a fly we are both flying mm, right in mm. different uh, cabins etc but at the same time people would only ask a female about this or or for that matter a male flight attendant like they wouldn't even even ask a male flight attendant yeah. who's taking don't even go that far. but would they ask a female pilot who's taking care of the kids i would not know so i would mm. always ask them you will never ask the pilot mm. but you'll ask me mm. this is this is a normal conversation that people would have now why i have been mostly guilt free about working and um, 
you know still having children mm. etc mm. one thing is that my mom is there mm. okay so i'm definitely not a better parent than my mother mm. okay so if 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 my child is or maybe people are not that blessed and they have to leave it their children with like house help mm. etc and it's okay because my mom was working she provided mm. and i i love my children but this is also my identity mm. so I, i do not feel guilty about working but you know what i have is that i miss them mm. like if i go away for too long mm. if i'm gone for the whole day mm. and if i have meetings back to back jab tak i come home my mm. kids will be sleeping mm. then you do not uh, guilt is something that i excuse myself from mm. also like my my family is like that because yeah. if i tell my husband i'm feeling guilty and he'll be like why do you feel guilty because you're providing Okay, mm. so then that changes your mindset mindset mm. uh, perspective etc but i do not feel guilty i just feel like i'm missing them i just missed out on a day that and then does it ever make you feel ki are maybe i can cut down on work and spend more time with kids does that ever i do that sometimes mm. i won't lie like you know if mm. there's like continuously two days or three days that where i have had like a few things if there's some things that can be shifted or mm. turned around then mm. you know i would i would do everything in my capacity to do mm. that mm. for sure great yeah which is important because yeah. you know like you make a balance yeah. and plus if you have your own business going on mm. you can still set the terms more than Oh, mm. anybody else. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. that. So, Avanika, you spoke about your husband taking care of the money. Yeah. And, and I totally understand that's the dynamic that the two of you have, your relationship with money, you trust him and all that. Uh, but I also want to do like kind of... Why, <laughs> why did you say trust? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I mean, it's... I mean, I, I understand it's a personality trait. It's less of a patriarchy, I feel, in yeah. this dynamic. Yeah. Uh, and I understand that your personality is not... being good with money and maybe he is good with money and hence that's the understanding between yeah. the two of you it's not because he's a man and no, he's no. not letting you no, no. ha so i understand it's a very personal thing yeah. it's not rooted in patriarchy yeah. but i also wanted to speak about you know i was watching your tedx talk and you spoke about when you became miss uttarakhand you wanted to go for miss india but miss india had swim swear swim wear round and your brother said that you're not going to uh, yeah. go for this because whatever he, he had his own yeah. reasons cut to 2020 2022 you're doing all these international holidays in your hot swimwear bikini looking <laughs> looking ultra with my brother also He with your brother yeah. in, in looking ultra glamorous and all that tell me tell me how did that mindset change for your brother to not let you i mean first of all that's pretty hurtful because you know like yeah. he's deciding he's taking decisions on your yeah. behalf for a swimwear swimwear round again no judgment there i mean i understand yeah. most indian men are like that but uh-huh. tell me i'll change that for you okay huh. um so think of it like remove the gender out of mm. this equation okay mm. let's say if today like raina and varya are there and let's say if varya raina wants to make her sister do something mm. right not saying my brother was not patriarchal he was mm. Yeah? Mm. but like if like you know he was just also very protective mm. and i would want to tell you that at that time we did not know better mm. Okay, so because you know everything around us was like that, hmm. you know it was okay to uh, to have that kind of mindset as well because the movies were showing that, the books were saying that, right. uh, the society was like that, right. and was pretty bragged on. He, I, my brother, very protective. Hmm. Hmm. It wasn't seen in the other light and be like you know that he's he's controlling yeah, you yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So it, it was it was held in high regard if a yeah, man is yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to protect yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. so it wasn't like that but um you know when uh, have you seen this thing like when people get divorced and you think oh why did these two people uh, who were so much in love uh, part ways mm. it's because you are growing okay mm. 10 years back how lokesh was and how avantika were they are two different people mm. so we uh, beautifully what has happened is that he's also had a growth and so did i mm. so he's had a growth in the direction where i was already at so he's come this way. Hmm. he could have gone the other hmm. way so that is what happened what, did you play a role in helping him evolve uh, and grow no no i think it happens naturally because you know he was also surrounded by very different mindsets so friends were the influences uh, no, for him you cannot I mean, blame your friends no no i'm saying in his growth yeah when he when he came 
I think uh, a lot of us were all like you know evolving, and we came to Dubai. Like he also moved to Dubai in two thousand eight. Hmm. So hmm. Things changed for him. Like he just started seeing things more differently. I think. Would he be okay with his wife in a in a swimwear on holidays? Me? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Or him? Your brother's. Oh, yeah, 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 your brother's yeah, wife. Yeah. He's okay with yeah, that. Yeah. Good to know, man. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. See you. Tata.